All right. Okay, just so you guys know, I am freaking out just a little bit about Shot Show. But freaking out in a good, good way. Because I am so, so excited. And I'm like so nervous as well. Because being a player for Airsoft for so many years, going to SHOT Show was like the biggest dream for an Airsofter, at least for me as an Airsofter. Just go to SHOT Show, participate in all that. And now that it's like actually coming true, now I'm starting to like, I mean, starting to get those jitters. Brady, What's up? interview question for you. Interview question? Yeah. You're it's really interviewing just, me. It's just one question. Okay. So, your first time going to SHOT Show, were yep. you freaking out? Freaking out? No. Just an excitement? Yeah. Or an anxious? How would you describe the first couple days leading, leading up to SHOT Show for you? Leading up to it? Uh-huh. Just excitement. Pure excitement. Because I had a hard time sleeping because of how excited I was. Oh. I have a hard time sleeping before, like, going to play Airsoft, so any bit of excitement makes it hard for me to sleep. Oh. I will say, once I got there, a lot of it was overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, I know the crowd's going to be something. It's not just the crowd, it's the scale. Of how much there is? Yes. How big it is, how much there is, how many people there are there. Not only just people viewing it, but people with booths. It's crazy. See, and that's something I'm going to try to capture. Because I'm also really anxious, because social media guy it's kind of my job to take as much video and pictures as possible hey you also want to know something really shitty what i accidentally deleted the main footage for the mp40 review and the springfield review you deleted all of it i accidentally deleted all of that from the main camera i just don't have the main camera like, the whole reason I got the camera, all of that footage, I deleted. I don't know, anything interesting that you have for the vlog? Uh, new custom, because that wasn't done last time. An AM16. God, are you, you have a hard time focusing? And that is coming with an indoor and an outdoor spring. One at 350 FPS, one at 400 FPS. Oops. I think I accidentally have this on manual focus. Yeah, an AM16 with the extended battery tube. A pretty cool T1, I think. It's got the buttons on the side there. New Valken one. Yeah. Uh, you do not change the grip. You change the spring, so you've got an outdoor at 390 and indoor at 345. No, it's like straight up 400 and 350. Oh, 400 350. Like right at the limits. And it's got the indoor in there right now because, well, it's indoor season. Ah, I think I showed you guys this before. The Amoeba Striker. So you've got the Ace Tech Predator, muzzle adapter, the spiral barrel, laser, bipod, foregrip, the M-Lock handguard, a super, super nice... Um, optic up there it comes with your full adjustments uh, adjustments of colors as well for reticle um, we put a 500 FPS spring in there so it's already tight uh, we also swapped out the bucking so you can get a little bit more consistency shot for shot we also went and bought from overseas a different grip and a riser here and actually because of the key rings, or not key rings, the scope rings up here, it sits the optic higher than what would be ideal, so the cheek riser helps with alignment through your scope there, compared to like what's coming standard, it's a flat grip and a flat cheek pad. So different grip, and the riser, it's like a one inch riser or something, versus flat. Flat. Hey my dudes, so plane leaves Monday 6.30 and it's Friday at 5.05 .05, and I'm starting to get the freak out. In fact, just picked up this new LBX backpack 
just to take to SHOT Show. Something to carry my laptop, my camera, all my information, patches. I'm gonna put another pouch up here. I don't know what. Water holder, something there. Guys, I need to get ready. Hey Lawrence, say hi to the camera. Oh, <laughs> Whoops, wrong fingers. That's okay. We all know that this is adult content anyway. <laughs> Here, so you can rep the right, the right team. Nah, they're, nah, nah. I'm not part of your team. I ain't no person's team. I'm my own man. So yeah, anyway, we're still chitting kind of, or chitting, chatting about the stuff that's gonna be at SHOT Show. Lawrence, do you have anything specifically that you want me to look at? P320s that I can use indoors. Not 410 feet per second. I told you, I can tech it down so it's still CO2 powered and full blowback. Uh, well, other P320s because that's where my heart is. I like Glocks and all that, and I really want the 34s to come out so I can get my hands on one of those, but P320. So right you, here. you just want me to look at the SIG platform? SIG booth. SIG booth and see what they're coming out with? Yeah, see if they're coming out with any of their other versions of the P320s, seeing if we're going to get any type of new... Um, Basically seeing what we're getting now that SIG is producing SIG itself. Yeah. I'm really hoping for an MPX platform. Last year, Brady and Carl both went to their rep and said, you got to make an MPX. MPX is going to be fucking killer. Yeah. And so I would gobble that up because yeah. I'm cheap and it's $300 versus, you know, $1,500 for the real steel. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they would make it to an AEG platform. But even if it's gas blowback, I think I would still pick it up. Yeah. That's yeah. probably like the yeah. one gas blowback rifle that I would pick up. Uh, anyway, we were chatting about PTS. Or at least the conversation started with polymer frames and then different slides for yeah. the Glocks. But y'all know me, I'm a Elite Force fan. So we were just talking about how PTS should, in fact, have the slides and frames for the Elite Force Glocks. So they have all these Glock platforms, or at least parts, but they're all for Tokyo Marui, or they even have, where is it, where is it, uh, K KSC. Who's got a KSC Glock anymore? You know? Probably a couple people out there. Okay, but how many more people are going to have an Elite Force Glock? Oh, yeah, well, now, especially in Western market, I mean, the TM stuff is a lot easier for, and that probably sells crazy overseas because you can get them pretty much anywhere yeah us over here getting a tm style glock is a little bit easier har well harder because i can you know walk into pretty much any airsoft store any airsoft website in the states now and pick up a glock 19 glock 17 it's, yeah it's like actually walking into a firearm store where you can buy a glock <laughs> for you know yeah. dirt cheap the license shit uh, Brady and I actually just finished up a video today about the differences in uh, measurements as far as slide length, barrel diameter, different points of the frame and slide and measuring that compared to our real Glocks and they're really fucking close. I mean like difference of from tenths to thousandths of an inch. I mean they are fucking almost spot on. Biggest difference is weight. but. That's a given. You're you're putting six millimeter BBs versus nine millimeter actual bullets. Yeah. So you're gonna have some weight difference. So PTS. Get us some Elite Force parts. And I expect to see Elite Force compatible Glock parts at your Shot Show booth. Especially since I love your products. PTS, I love your mags. Oh, that's another thing. We have to check out when they're gonna be releasing in mass quantity there. EPM 2.0s. 2.0s, what? Am I yeah. going to spend money on seven more mags? Yeah, it's their 200 rounders. Is that the only difference, though? Yeah. Oh. Oh. But you get the same, like, overall quality, like you, how fast you can load, or oh, the BBs so load, like different how consistent. Different. Let's take a look. EPM 2. So it's a little different as far as styling. I'll probably get some just, just because. Yeah. You know more reasons to spend money on a sport that I spend way too much on already. Yeah. Not even a sport, hobby. <laughs> yeah. That's a hobby for me. And the new magazines feature the same stuff that I'm doing to my current EPMs where I'm drilling into the very front of the 
magazine just to see how many rounds I have as far as oh. how close I am to the magazine being empty. Yeah. Um, but they have it showing how full the magazine is. The magazine full, you don't know really if it's half full. I guess you can kind of gauge. There looks to be a little window on the magazine towards the top rear. Um, but yeah. yeah. I'm starting to get the freakouts, but it's all happy freakouts, very anxious freakouts, since this is my first year at SHOT Show. I'm going to try to capture as much for you guys and for you, Lawrence, So you, because you're watching all my videos, right? Most of them. And you're subscribed. I think I am. Probably. Just what I want to hear. <laughs> Probably. Dude, I'm, there's a lot of channels that I watch, let's be honest. That's okay. I'm subscribed, but I don't have my notifications turned on for my own channel. <laughs> Actually, I've been watching a lot of T-Rex arms lately. Isn't he awesome? We just talked about him in our the video we just did. Yeah. Or we just filmed. So yeah, uh, that's it for today. You guys will see us at SHOT Show. Brady's going to have a new vlog video while I'm gone. And hopefully this microphone turned out really good because this is the Rode camera. The super expensive ones. So hopefully that works out better than what I was using originally, which was nothing. Anyway, you guys take care, and I will see you <laughs> in a couple days with a new review video. Take care. Bye.